As the world update nears completion, it's time to consider what features could enhance the update. From new flora and fauna, to additional features for existing blocks and items. So here's a collection of mods that can enhance the wild update. Firstly, we'll need to bring the bulk of the wild update experience into previous Minecraft versions. Depending on which version or mod loader you prefer to use, the following options would be a good place to start. For the most vanilla experience, the 119 snapshots can work, although few mods in this video are available for those versions. The Wild Update mod is the most complete and up-to-date mod for Forge 1.18, 117 and 116, bringing most of the features from the update. The Wild mod is the ideal choice for fabric users for 118 and 117. Forge users who are sticking to 116 also have the choice to follow this collection of mods from this video, mods to bring the wild update into Minecraft. If you pursue this option, it will be best to watch the video first so you have an idea as to what mods you will need. Now that's out of the way, we can delve into the core aspects of the wild update and find mods that we can use to improve those areas. We'll first start with the Deep Dark, a dark and unknown place that's tainted with Skulk. One of the game's most mysterious structures, the ancient city, dwells within this place, guarded by the Warden. Few mods have been made to enhance this place, but fortunately we have some mods to help make the experience within the Deep Dark more forgiving but terrifying. One way for players to avoid confronting the Warden is with walled boots. As the name states, this mod lets players slot wool onto their boots to silence their movement. This silences all vibrations when walking, falling or throwing projectiles, which for some can make it much easier to navigate the ancient city without much concern. With these, players can be more comfortable when within this place, but still must be aware that their interactions with blocks can trigger the warden. Deep Slate acts as the new stone for levels below zero. However, there's one thing it misses, Mossy Deep Slate. Fortunately, Mossier Deep Slate brings Mossy Block variants to craft for Deep Slate. Cobbled and tiled Deep Slate, Deep Slate Bricks and their variants are now able to be covered in moss. It's a simple addition that can offer some new ways to use Deep Slate for builds. Although not a mod, Dead Guy's Skulk Plus Resource Pack is a neat option to provide a visual upgrade to some of the Skulk content. This pack retextures the Skulk Catalyst and Shrieker, reinforce Deep Slate and the Warden to feel more unnatural. Moving up towards the surface, mangroves are a new biome coming to 119, featuring mangrove trees, frogs and mud. Despite the mangrove swamp being a neat addition to the swamp family, the original swamps feel left out. With this collection of mods, the original swamps should hopefully have some extra content added, as well as featuring new swamp biomes to add some more diversity. A good mod to start off with is Daylini's Swamp Expansion. This mod provides a range of new kinds of flora to the swamps to make them feel unique, from new mushroom types to cattails and a new crop wild rice. The new flora not only serves as a good decorative option, but also provides new food options to use when roaming the swamps. Since mud is being added into 119, why not use the Muddy Pig mod as well? Muddy Pig brings the mob from Minecraft Earth into the game, residing in swamps and by rivers. These pigs behave much like their clean counterparts, with the exception of dropping Muddy Pork Chop a dirty food variant which must be cleaned with water to be edible. For some, this mob may not fit into Minecraft, but for others it could be a good opportunity to bring back the mobs who won't see the light of day. Ambient structures are one thing that Minecraft seems to lack. There's the infamous wells, and then there's those fossils. Well, Young's Extras is one such mod that seeks to resolve this. Currently, Young's Extras has a range of ambient structures to the swamps and the deserts. 
In the swamps, remains of an ancient civilization have sunk into the elements of nature. Stretching far and wide in the deserts, a myriad of wells, outposts and obelisks stand. They may not be the most grand of structures, but these additions help to enhance an aspect of Minecraft that's missing. Enhancing the swamps doesn't just involve enhancing the vanilla swamps, but also bringing new swamp biomes in for some variation. Bayo Blues is one such mod which brings the swamp biome Bayo into Minecraft. Bayos contain a vast array of new flora within, from cypress trees covered in beard moss to algae clusters growing in the waters within, and new lily flower plants which can also be found in the vanilla swamps. With this mod, the swamps in Minecraft feel a bit more diverse. Pulling back from the big features of the update, we're receiving the LA, a passive mob that can help the player transport items around. Despite it being cute, there are a couple things that could be done to improve their behaviour. Fortunately, mods come to the rescue, which seek to make them easier to use. First up, Colour Delay is a very simple mod that lets the LA's be dyed to any colour by the player. Whether it's for complex transport systems, or for making your LA's more distinct, this mod is a good way to help make them more recognisable. A mod to spice up LA's is YDM's LA. These LA's reside in flower forests and can be lured with either a cookie, music disc, jukebox or note block. Overall, many of the core LA behaviours are the same. Giving them an item will cause them to search for more of the same item and will return to the note block where it was situated. However, there are some extra additions. Firstly, LA's can be dyed with any colour and can be illuminated with glowing sacks. The model has also been updated, they're slightly less transparent, larger in size, and features a second model which can be reverted to its original if the player chooses. With this mod, LA's are now easier to find and easier to use. Next is a collection of mods that relate to the 119 theme, but don't really fit within the main categories. These include some small additions like new blocks, to new biomes, and more. Disc 5 introduced a new way to obtain music discs by collecting a series of disc fragments that when combined form the disc. Imitating that same concept, more disc fragments feature disc fragments for all the music discs in game to make obtaining the other music discs a bit less grindy. Killing a hostile mob will have a chance to drop a disc fragment. On its own, it offers an easier method to acquiring music discs. However, there's also plans to bring some new additions to the mod in the future, so stay tuned for that. Environmental brings a general facelift and expansion to the overworld's biomes, bringing new kinds of flora and fauna to the vanilla biomes to make them feel more alive and distinct. New biomes are also introduced to create some extra biome variation, including the marshes and the blossom woods. On top of that, there's a range of new foods and blocks to craft, providing some extra uses for existing vanilla blocks and items. This mod alone is a great foundation to improving Minecraft's biomes in general, making the world feel wilder. Frogs are one such mob that's coming into Minecraft. Despite their unique ability to consume magma cubes and their climate variants, there's one missed opportunity with frogs. Pick your poison adds dart frogs into jungles, coming in a myriad of variations to encounter. These exotic frogs, however, aren't what you think, as these frogs will unleash a deadly effect to the player if they're attacked. Each frog variant contains its own unique type of poison, from halting health regeneration with torpor, to allowing the player to run even on low hunger but at the cost of their health with stimulation. These effects may make dart frogs more annoying than helpful, however, they can be tipped onto poison darts to use against mobs and other players. Goat horns and copper horns brings goat and copper horns to the game. Unlike in vanilla, the goat horns are acquired by killing a goat with a netherite axe. Each goat horn will play a different sound.
but can also be surrounded with copper to assemble a copper horn. Copper horns are unique in that they play a different sound based on what the player's state is. Although the goat horns are now officially coming into 119, at least the player can have a chance to get themselves the copper horns as well. Terra Incognita, the Unknown Land, is another mod that enhances the world by bringing an assortment of new flora to find. Most notable addition includes a wide range of flowers, lily pads and trees dotted across specific biomes. New biomes, foods and decoration blocks are additionally included to enhance the world. Floral Flare is one such mod that spices up the world with a range of new flowers. These flowers are found scattered across the many biomes of the overworld, from purpureems blooming in the swamps to foxnips flourishing in tigers. These new flowers are a nice way to add a sense of beauty in the nature of the wild. The birch forest concept art showed hollowed birch logs lying on the floor. Although we possibly won't be receiving this feature in the new update, one mod that can achieve that is Hollow Woods. With this mod, players can carve out all wood types in the Stonecutter, both their natural and stripped variants. These hollow logs serve more than just an aesthetic feature, as they can be waterlogged and allow players to navigate through them. No Cubes Wilderness is another mod that brings fresh flora to the world of Minecraft, from wild berries to new mushrooms. These can be used to create many new foods to consume, like jam breads, pancakes, cooked fungi, and can be bundled up as a decorative block. The mod also brings smaller features too, like a beekeeper's helmet to wicker blocks that can be made from birch bark. Another mod to add new flora is Grouse Strife's plants. In this mod, an array of biome-specific plants can be located across the overworld, the nether, and even the end. The mod also includes an ambient mob, the plantling, which are found in all dimensions. Despite most of the plants serving for just decoration, it's a nice way to liven up many of the biomes to make them fresh and unique. Moving towards the Badlands in Minecraft, there's better Badlands. This mod aims to improve the terrain and content that lies within Badlands. Small dark oak trees can be located on the Badlands plateaus, adding some extra tree variety. Terracotta can be used to surround lanterns to craft terracotta lamps a nifty light and decoration source which emits light on one side. Kindling is additionally another new block which will burn quickly when lit. Not to be confused with the first Badlands mod, Betterlands is another mod that enhances the Badlands. This brings exclusive life like the bighorn sheep and juniper trees to the biome. Fossil rocks are another major component to the Badlands, which offers a quicker method to acquiring bones. Terracotta now offers new types of terracotta blocks to craft, from terracotta bricks to roof tiles and pavements, opening new ideas for building with terracotta. Wrapping up this mod collection, there's a few quality of life mods to make your wild update experience have the extra finishing touches. Perhaps one of the biggest issues with swamp trees is their inability to regrow. That however changes with replant swamp trees. In this mod, growing an oak tree in a swamp biome will grow into its swamp variant, allowing for an easy means to decorate swamp related areas. Vine Collector is another quality of life mod that makes shearing vines more efficient. Rather than trimming each block one by one, cutting just the topmost vine will harvest the entire vine. This mod also affects other blocks with a similar behaviour to vine, including both the weeping and twisting vines, glowberries and kelp, which not only improves the acquisition of vines, but makes farming them much easier. To add a splash of ambience, there's falling leaves. As the name implies, falling leaves adds leaf particles that gently tumble below leaves. This helps to add a touch of life to biomes that feature trees. There's other mods that do the same job, but this one seems to receive frequent updates and has an extensive config to tweak the mod to your preference.
That concludes the mods to enhance the wild update. Links to all the mods used in the video are in the description below. If you want some more ideas to enhance a particular update of the game, I suggest you check out this video here, which aims to complement the caves and cliffs.